Vicky, you often hear pregnant women say that they are eating for two. Should they actually be doing this? It's a myth because what they're doing is really just trying to comfort eat perhaps and it's to their detriment and to the detriment of the pregnancy and that of the baby. Now what kind of complications can maybe eating too much or overindulging um, cause for a woman who's pregnant? There's a broad range of, of problems. The first range, the, f the first thing that um, is obvious is the patient will gain weight, the, the pregnant mother, which causes strain on the lower back and the hips and the legs. Um, very possibly the patient may become diabetic if they're overweight, um, not only for the gestational period, but perhaps even diabetic going forward. The same applies to the development of hypertension. They stand a good chance of developing um, hypertension during the pregnancy and thereafter. Then there's also things relating to the baby. The birth weight of the baby can be increased, um, so more likely to have complications in the delivery, needing assisted delivery, maybe even a caesarean section. Um, and very often the patients who are overweight will more often complain of having reflux or heartburn. I think a lot of women who are pregnant just associate weight gain with pregnancy. Now, what's a healthy amount of weight to gain while you're pregnant? I think the first thing to know is to know what your weight is before pregnancy and know what your body mass index is. Because depending on that, it does guide a little better as to what the average weight gain should be. Um, if you don't know your body mass index, one can always go online and do an online calculation. You need to know your height and you need to know your weight. And if you've got a normal body mass index between 18 and 25, you'd want to only gain between 11 and 16 kilograms in that pregnancy. If, however, you are overweight, you want to try and gain a little less, probably between 7 and 11 kilograms in that pregnancy. Now, in your experience, do most women follow this, or are there um, myths that need to be debunked around being pregnant when it comes to eating? I think the, the, the women that follow it are possibly those that um, don't feel the need to comfort eat and those that are more weight conscious in terms of their image who might try and, and watch themselves a little more closely. It is hard because you are under strain, um, your, your body's taking other changes, um, but it's not an excuse and it's not a time to let yourself go because it's actually a time to be enjoying the pregnancy and to be looking and feeling good. All right, well, we already established that women shouldn't be eating for two, but how much more, if any more, should, should they be eating? How should they be adjusting their diet to um, take into account the, the baby? For a start, they must remember that they're not eating for another full-size adult. They're only eating for the size of a baby um, to start with. And then looking at their calorie intake, you would look at having between three, 300 calories a day more, and perhaps towards late on in the pregnancy, maybe 450 calories per day more than you would usually have. But it's all about doing things in moderation. It's all about having a, a, a variety of foods, making sure that you're covering all the food groups. And if you were um, cutting any things out in your diet pre-pregnancy, for instance, carbohydrates, during the pregnancy would be the time to reintroduce those. Now what's interesting to me is mothers who are vegetarians or vegans or who choose not to eat um, meat, let's say that you're on a diet um, of that nature, is that healthy for, for the baby or should they think about reintroducing meats into their diet? Not necessarily. They can manage it by watching, watching their iron levels to make sure that they are supplementing their iron adequately to allow for the fetus to develop without the patient becoming anemic because anemia would be a, a complication in pregnancy and can compromise the cardiovascular status for the, for the mother. So you supplement the iron and those patients are that much more cautious to make sure that they're taking suitable iron supplementation. Now what are some of the physical risks associated with um, eating too, too much while you're pregnant or becoming overweight while, while you're carrying a child? The, the physical risks um, that we spoke about would be the pain associated with having a heavier weight, 
because you have to carry around more weight with you during the day. Um, hypertension is a big one. The, the patients who are hypertensive may then require being put on treatment during the pregnancy, have to be followed up that much more carefully post-pregnancy to see that they, their blood pressure normalizes. And they have a higher seizure um, rate than patients who don't have hypertension. And as I said, diabetes would be the other big risk factor. Nobody wants to become a type 2 diabetic. That's a diagnosis that's going to stay with you unless you lose that weight. Now, is that gestational diabetes? Because I was reading a little bit about this, and it's a gestational diabetes. Could be a result of eating too much while you're pregnant. Is that just another word for type 2 diabetes, or is it different? Um, no, it's different because gestational diabetes may re re revert post-pregnancy, and it may just be during the gestational time that the patient is diabetic. But there's a higher risk that gestational diabetics can become type 2 diabetics post-pregnancy. So you don't want to even entertain or, or risk getting into that into that risk category. And the safest way to do that is to watch your weight because obesity is the greatest risk factor for gestational diabetes and type 2 diabetes.